action. Here with Kay James, Ambassador Labs. Kay, how are you? I'm great. Do you know that song Under Pressure by Queen? Of um, course. Da, da, yeah. Yeah. Um, da, da, yeah. Da, da, yeah. I, that's wrong, but <laughs> then it's like, that's okay. And so I think that's okay. That, that There's always the little pressure that goes into a, a good demo. So you had the classic issues that happened. Yes. Environment is not working, it's a little fragile, but now it is. So what are you going to show us? I'm going to show us Telepresence. Um, it is a developer tool that allows you to run some code locally and perform end-to-end -end testing with a remote Kubernetes cluster. And I know it's going to go great. That's right. I made it's sure. It's going to rock. <laughs> All right, let's get to it. Um, yeah, so what we're looking at right now is our uh, demo application. Um, it's called Mojivoto. Um, basically, you can vote on some emojis. You click on one, takes you to a leaderboard, and you can see how they I stack love those up emojis. There's a yeah. puppy dog. There's yes. a classic flame and rocket. Clearly, trophy. Santa is a fan favorite out here. Santa, I bet, is a fan favorite. Yeah. So huh. that's the application. Everyone um, wants gifts. Yeah, let's say uh, this is our staging cluster. So me and my colleagues, we all work in this cluster, um, and this is where we do our testing before shipping to production, right? Okay. And let's say that I'm working on the front-end web service. So right. there's three main microservices, the web service, the emoji service, and then the voting service that gives right. us those voting behaviors. So I'll go in my... Uh, IDE and I'll you know start working on the service. I have a breakpoint down, so I want to debug, right? So I'll run this service. La 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 la. Oops, oh, on the wrong thing. I have to run the server. Um, that's going to spin this up on localhost 8080. We could see it's running there. So then I could go to localhost 8080 and take a look at that. But you know that doesn't give the full picture of end-to-end -end testing and how that looks interacting with the emoji and voting services. And at this point, I could spin up both of those services locally, but you know, as your application expands and gets bigger, it's harder on your local machine to run everything, right? The alternative is to deploy this to the cluster, um, but then you're going to have all that, your CI CD process, and that could take a lot of time just to get what you're working on in the cluster. And at the same time, you lose the ability to use your debugger and all that type of stuff. Um, so that's where telepresence comes in and allows us to do everything locally um, a lot quicker. So I'm going to run Telepresence Connect to connect to my cluster. Um, we can see we're connected now. Um, and then we're going to create an intercept. So I have a graphic in here that shows what that means. Um, and basically, if this was our cluster, traffic would come in and get routed to a service in the cluster. Um, but with an intercept, we're able to reroute traffic that would go to a service in the cluster and send it to our local machine. Uh, and we can create an intercept in this UI as well. So if I go to the emoji voto namespace where the, my web service lives, click intercept, and specify the port that I have this running on locally, which is 8080. This is going to give us two things, a header value and a preview URL. So the way that Telepresence knows to send traffic to my local machine is with this header value. So any traffic that reaches the pod with this header value is going to go to my local code. Header value is then really important then in this yeah. situation, isn't it? Definitely. What can go wrong with a header value? Um, well, if you don't use the header value, then you won't be able to get the traffic to your local machine. There you go. Yeah. But do you have to set it up in a way to make it work correctly? Is it? Um, yeah. So you'll have to have some kind of uh, context propagation between your services. So in this mm -hmm. case, this um, is a web service, so it's on the front end. But if you have a, if you're intercepting a service that's deeper in your stack, you, um, you'll need to have some mechanism for the header to get propagated. Okay. Um, so what's cool about this preview URL it gives us is that it's automatically propagating that header value. So if we go to the preview URL, we could see my changes that I made in the code here. So the background is different, um, and we can vote on the emojis. So I'm still only running my uh, web service, that single service locally, and then the emojis and the voting behavior is actually coming from the services in the cluster. Um, so you end up with this hybrid environment uh, where you're working locally, but meeting dependent services in the cluster. And then what's cool about the preview URL is I could share this with my colleagues. So I could have a teammate on the other side of the world uh, take a look at what I'm working on in real time um, as I'm working on it, uh, instead of waiting for some kind of CD process to uh, send this to the cluster. So then uh, if we take a look at our uh, staging cluster in our original domain that we were using to access it. So we could still interact with the uh, application here, and you'll notice that the background's the same. So um, 
my colleagues who are working in this cluster, if they interact with the service without that header value, they're still going to see the original service um, that's actually deployed in cluster. And they'll only see my um, green background and what the changes I made if they use that header value right. um, with their um, traffic. So this allows multiple developers to be working in the same environment uh, at the same time uh, without impeding on one another. Um, so you could have um, a single shared developer environment um, for everyone to work in and perform testing at the same time. Because they're going to be working on multiple services, yeah. potentially. This is kind of a platform engineering story, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, we see people having to spin up multiple namespaces and uh, creating the same application in, in all those namespaces for each developer. And you know that can get really expensive with a Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster. So if you could put everyone in the same environment and only have one environment to maintain, um, that saves you, your team, a lot of money um, and headache in terms ah. of managing that. And is that one of the pain points you see with users is they have multiple environments? Yeah. Or they, you know, just how do you handle a, a complex Kubernetes environment and you know give everyone a namespace or run it all locally and um, so yeah, yeah, telepresence. That's the real difficulty that with uh, Kubernetes, I think, for people to get their minds around, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. You know, a lot of developers aren't thinking about this, or they maybe they're not as well versed in Kubernetes, um, so they don't know how it works or how all uh -huh. these dependent services work. So you can kind of hide all of that behind the magic of telepresence and allow them to just focus on the actual development and not trying to figure out how Kubernetes works. Why don't we hear much about telepresence? We do hear a little bit about it, but what is your thought on the value of telepresence then? Well, Kubernetes is still growing, and everyone is trying to figure out ways to make it work for them. Mm -hmm. And the thing with telepresence is that everybody, everyone's environment is a little bit different. So the, or, and how you want to go about solving these issues with Kubernetes is different. Like everyone's starting from a different place. Um, so I think that's kind of the challenge is trying to get people to see how they can utilize this for their specific environment or use case because everyone's coming from a different angle with it. And you're facilitating that with your application here. Yeah, so there's a number of ways to utilize telepresence. I did it um, through our Ambassador Cloud UI. You could also do this um, through the CLI. Uh, we have what we call intercept specifications. So you can uh, basically put it all in the YAML file and run a single command, and it, it runs through all the steps uh, manual or uh, automated in an automated fashion. So you don't need to remember a bunch of uh, CLI commands. And we also have a Docker desktop integration. So uh, we have an extension with Docker desktop. So if you're working with Docker and containers a lot, you can also do this exact same thing through Docker. Thank you so much, Kay. I really appreciate your time uh, showing us a little bit about uh, the, the use of uh, your application for helping users really better understand and, and maximize telepresence. Yeah, of course. Thanks for having me. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms, you can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.